I believe the last time you were on, we we were just starting to talk about that big RDNA 4 was canceled and that AMD is going for mid-range. There's a lot of catastrophizing about that. Although I know you've obviously, let alone me, but you've much longer than me, have been around long enough to know that frankly, every two to three gens, AMD does not go for the ultra high end. Like this is a pattern where they're like high end, high end, mid range, high end, high end, mid range. Like they do it all the time. 6,000 series, arguably, certainly Polaris and 3870. I mean, this is 5870 was just so good. It managed to beat <laughs> actually NVIDIA's high end card, even though I don't think they were really trying to. Like you talk about like do one product really well. Do you think that could be what like the 8800 XT is? Because it really does sound like it's going to be 7900 XT, 7900 XTX raster, surprisingly, maybe 4070 Ti Super ray tracing. If you could just hit that at 500 or something, I just think that would make so much more of a splash than losing to the 5090 by 20%. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. And I think that's what I want to see. I personally don't have any appetite for more $1,000 plus GPUs, no mm. matter how fast they are. So if the new cards are sub 700 bucks and they're winning in the performance per dollar range and they give me the, the great gaming experiences that I want, they move the ball forward in terms of people want to upgrade from a 3070, a 4070, then that's going to be a clean win, I think, for AMD. And I think that's something to be proud of, no matter what the number on it is, whether it's 8800, 8950, XTX, Uber, Wildcat. I don't, it doesn't matter, right? It's just that, that going after that heart of the market, getting back to your foundation, making your business units profitable and well-respected and delivering excellent execution, building back trust, then gives you permission to come back and say, well, let's maybe go for the high end again. But like you said, the difference between NVIDIA's investment in GPU and everybody else's is whole companies now, just immense levels mm -hmm. of investment. So if you're not going to go do that same level of investment, why would you expect to have the same level of results? Good point. I don't know, but a lot of people on Reddit seem to think you can just snap your fingers and have the exact same thing with a quarter of the budget for some reason. You know, the best one in the world, I would love to see AMD competing at the high end of the GPUs. The investment's not there. It's not been there in the financial statements. So you can see that it's not been done. Where has it moved to? AI, data center. I think that that's a reset moment. A new architecture can unify mm. some of these things. Like we haven't seen NVIDIA's gaming performance hurt by their investment in AI, right? Introducing tensor cores and mm. all the other associated developments in their SOC to support AI have not impacted gaming in a negative way. So Yeah, they found think, a way to make it work for gaming. Even if right. they, they had to find a way, they did. They found a way. They found a way. So now AMD has to find a way to, okay, let's go focus on AI, build this, mid-range GPUs, but then you can see that then there's a moment down the roadmap where that trickles and kicks in again. So I'm not saying this is a placeholder launch. I think that the AMD graphics guys are absolutely meaning to win in gaming at the mid-range, and they are deadly serious about it. Uh, but that there's a future benefit to come through here with the architecture advancements as they redesign and redeploy and refocus. And, and am I wrong? I feel like you were leading towards kind of saying this, like you kind of hinted with the word like stalling or buying time. Do you, this is a theory I have that UDNA is something that could allow them to much more effectively compete in high end again, because it's hard to justify a $2,500 graphics card if all it's used for is gaming. I mean, we see the GPU market is in a downturn right now, but NVIDIA can sell them all into AI. AMD can't as easily. Were they to be able to sell a 7900 XTX with a different name and 48 gigabytes of RAM as, you know, <laughs> something they can sell for 10 grand like NVIDIA can? I mean, it's so easy to justify, you know, so I, I wonder what you think, like, if UDNA, because I've seen a lot of people like go, why would they do UDNA? And it's like, I think that's the only way they can justify making high-end graphics cards again. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a rinse and repeat of the uh, Zen strategy, right? The first Zeppelin die was for Epic and for Ryzen. And 
that, that um, reuse really enabled us to have the, the two market approach back then. So look at it now. What are NVIDIA doing? Well, they take an architecture that they put into high-end server products, and then they de-feature, de-swizzle, make into professional-grade cards, and then take it down again, make it into consumer cards. But it's really all the same thing, right? Now, to compete with that, you have to follow the same strategy. And, you know, if it's UDNA or whatever it is, comes in, and is fantastic for the AI strategy in the data center as a attach card for, you know, to go into the instinct product lines, mm-hmm. like it's an MI 400, 500, whatever it comes in, it goes into instinct and then it goes into Radeon for gaming. And there's minimal changes need between the three, like you can modulate clocks, enabled cores, memory attached, then wow, that's how you get multiple products that win in different markets at the high end, right? When you just try to build a high-end gaming card and then say, it's also really good at AI, it's where you get the trouble because everyone doesn't believe you. You have to come at it the other way. So as much as you know, I and others in the enthusiast market have hated the, well, we get the quote-unquote hand-me-downs from the uh, server mm. market, from the data center market, that's what's delivering your best performance and your high, great new experiences. It gives you Threadripper, it gives you 4090s, it gives you all of these things together. So you've got to be willing to take these, these compromises in thought process of how they build the product stack to get the high-end competition so that maybe a, a 5090 isn't three grand like the old rtx titan v was but oh it might be though <laughs> it might be right they, they can price whatever they want so who knows what it's going to be you know it, it feels sometimes to me like nvidia competes well they're certainly competing in gpu but <laughs> they go balls to the walls when they want to and i think that nvidia saw the 290x for example beat the titan and the 7970 before that really you know kind of almost matched their titan as well once it matured with drivers and they went okay amd can compete if we just sit around and then that's when they just boom went for it with maxwell more aggressive pricing they accelerated the release on 28 nanometer i mean they just went for it and they in my opinion really when they crushed amd is maxwell they just kept hammering with pa- they could have charged 800 for the 1080 but they charged 700 then 500 you yeah. know and, I, and the 1080 ti could have been a thousand they didn't let amd up for air for a while there and no. they've been leaving them up for air <laughs> lately i think they've been leaving some room but i wonder what you think about this idea of like there is actually an opportunity here that jensen's probably okay with like i almost get the feeling that jensen right now with gaming is like hey look amd If you want to kill yourself to take 20% GPU market share and get to 40% or something, go for it because we're making so much more money in AI. And at the same time, because AMD is not a $1 trillion company yet, I don't know, maybe it might not be a a lobster dinner, but steak to someone who eats chicken every day (laughs) might be lobster or something, you know, like, so I wonder what you think about like this actually with RDNA 4 is an opportunity and AMD should not make it 600 they should make it 500 because actually nvidia is fine with that this year do you think that's a good argument or do you still think it's just same old same old not really they should just stick with trying to do everything they're doing everywhere and do only what they have to do yeah that's the difference between a gpu first company and a cpu first company I think that if AMD says, you know what, let's go hard and do $500 graphics cards, I don't think NVIDIA will chase them. They'll say, we're in the headlines. We're the ones everyone's talking about every day. Win on Sunday, sell on Monday is going to work for us. And I'm already taking the margin hit to go enable the GPU market instead of selling everything into data center. Why would I take more of a margin hit for them to get five points? Right. It seems like you think AMD does have an opening. There's two ways AMD can play that, right? Is, well, if NVIDIA don't care, then I can price high because it doesn't matter what I do. Mm -hmm. Which I'm not saying I'm sure they'll do 500. I think 600 is very likely for AMD, you know? Right. I mean, the way I would approach this is I would come in um, with a solid price performance improvement from the previous generation. You know, make it look that every frame that you get is, you know, 10%, 15% lower price than what you got from the previous gen of AMD and is competitive with NVIDIA. Maybe not more expensive, but, you know, 2 3% 
right in there and then watch what happens in the market and be ready to pull the lever to pull it down. If you see a real opening like, hey, you're selling a bunch of them, leave it alone. If the sales are kind of slow or start rolling off, then, okay, let's move with it and, and continue to drive it. And definitely be asking your product team, can you give me a 8850? right, in six months' time, something. If we need to. Right, so that I can bring that in at my original price point and push the 8,800 down even more, right? Just do that price point, replace and, and drop and everything else and just push that down. So there's a number of strategies that they can employ here. We'll see what they want to do. I think they're serious about wanting to take share back. The perception was when Intel launched their GPUs that the really wasn't re- – NVIDIA fans and AMD fans, they were NVIDIA people and not NVIDIA people because the only person who lost share were AMD. So Mm -hmm. AMD now have to go counter that and say, whoa, 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 no, actually, we're really good at gaming. We've got these great GPUs. We've got all this fan base. Radeon is everywhere. And we're going to go win the hearts and minds of that community and and show it off with the 8800 XT or whatever it's called. I I really think even at $500, from what I've heard, the die isn't very big anyways. Like They can probably still make good margin. And the question will become, is it going to be good at good price performance at $600? Or actually, is there that extra margin where at $500, actually, we're still making good margin? So let's go for the kill. What I would say to AMD, I'm sure they're thinking about this, is if you think you have a kill on your hands here, be ready for the follow-up because my suspicion is Jensen wouldn't care for one generation. I mean, he doesn't. I mean, he's got AI. It doesn't matter. He will care the next gen. There will be another Maxwell moment if he thinks he needs it to just regain the market share. So, and I, I think this is something I kind of hear behind the scenes is AMD's a little scared to go for 20, 30% market share or more because they know once they go for that, the gloves come off again because Jensen does not like losing. So I would say to AMD, if you're going to go for it, Make sure UDNA is also looking good because it's going to need to really try to harness what you've built. And and I think it was such a disappointment that like RDNA 1 was surprisingly very good, very competitive for, I think, what expectations were. RDNA 2, a lot of people think was just better than Ampere. It just didn't have Mm -hmm. the production to take market share. And then RDNA 3 fumbled. It's not terrible, but it fumbled. And I think it's like, well, now you got to start over again. Because you need three gens in a row of just feeling like you're at the same level before I think you can really take mind share. And so, I don't know. I I think a lot of it would also come down to is like AMD. I mean, are you ready to really go for it as well? And I think that's what we're going to learn is when we see what they do. Oh, I don't know. I had a a pretty visceral reaction to you saying they were afraid to go for it. Because the the guys that I saddled up and rode into battle with Ryzen against Intel, nah, we weren't. We weren't afraid. But those are different teams, to be fair. I don't know how much they're different now. I would uh, I would do some poking around. Oh, so you think they're out? You think they're out for blood? Then I I, th- I think that there's um, some quiet confidence. You know, Jack Hume's running that now across client and graphics. I would say they're strapping up the gloves and, and ready to ride in. I definitely don't think they're afraid. I will say that maybe the what's a winning scenario or outcome is not what the enthusiast market think it is, right? Mm. If you just put together a plan and you say, we're going to do conservatively this and uh, aggressively, this is our target market for market share at a price point over a number of units in a given amount of time and you deliver more than that, you beat every metric, then you can't call that failure, even if you're at, say, 18% of the GPU market, right? That's certainly the case. Remember, we started from, AMD Ryzen started from like 5%, <laughs> yeah. right? When we got to 10, Trump, it's everywhere, but 10%, really? You think that's great? It's, you know, it's, it really depends on your vantage point. If the plan was to get from 5% to 7% in a generation and you deliver 10%, you're heroes. You're awesome. You're wonderful because you beat the plan and you delivered on the commitments and everybody outperformed. So it really depends on what are they trying to do with, the AEA, with this new card? How are they trying to go to? It sounds to me like they're going off the heart of the market. That sounds like an aggressive, aggressive strategy. Um, how will they get there? I don't think they're going to be uh, shy. I think they're going to come in hard and fast. But I think we're going to see the standard intro pricing. Maybe it's a little high and dial it in.
This piece of content is brought to you by CDKeyOffer.com. Just in the past few weeks, Dan built a new PC with a fresh install of Windows 11 on a blazing fast Gen 5 NVMe SSD. And of course, that code for Windows 11 came from CDKeyOffer.com. And we've been using CDKeyOffer.com at Moore's Law Z for a very long time. I use it for my office software on both my desktop and my laptop and that's because they're reliable they've always been there for us and they offer reasonable prices for microsoft products that are usually set in my opinion at monopolistic pricing and you know what they're actually having a black friday sale right now so if you're looking to get the best pricing on microsoft software or games or other products on their website as well Please show support for a company that's shown support for the Moore's Law is Dead team and community for years by using offer code Broken Silicon to get 25% off all Microsoft software and DieString to get 3% off everything else. Again, you're supporting the channel even if you just click on the links in the description. But of course, also, if you need these products, getting them through cdkeyoffer.com during their big Black Friday sale, well, that helps the channel even more. So support Moore's Law is Dead by checking out cdkeyoffer.com today.